Horace the Baker's Horse by Jackie French, illustrated by Peter Bray. Mornings come with ash grey light, daytime nibbling at the night. Every Monday, old William slid big loaves with crusty tops and soft white insides out of the ovens as well as round brown damper loaves and currant buns. Young Billy helped, punching the loaves into shape or wrapping the buns into bundles of twelve till he had to stop to get ready for school. Tuesday had finger buns with pink icing as well as the bread loaves. Cream buns on Wednesday, round buns on Thursday. And on Friday, the rich fruit bread for weekend toast with butter and strawberry jam. Horace delivered them all to Mrs. Tuppence, who liked a half-half and a small brown, to Mrs. Atkins, who ordered six high tops for her six kids. Sometimes Big Bill left the loaves wrapped in tissue paper in the letter boxes, and sometimes Hor Horace left his own gifts for the women to collect in buckets for their roses. Everyone said that Horace's roses were the best ever grown. Old William's was the best bred too. In summer, when the hills turned brown, they stopped for Horace to drink from the creek and for Big Bill to eat his bread and cheese. In autumn, the leaves fell and tickled Horace's nose. In winter, the spider's webs turned to frosted jewels and Horace's breath smoked white. Big Bill gave Horace more oats to give him energy to keep warm. And in spring, there were roses, Horace grown roses. Horace liked roses best of all. There were other horses to greet too. The milkman's horse, the big bay who pulled the vegetable cart, the butcher's horse, dappled grey, and the rabbitos pony. The horses exchanged whinnies as they passed on the road. Every evening, old William carried the wood to the ovens while Horace watched from his paddock. Every night, old William mixed the dough into the giant machines until the night the old William slumped to the ground. What's that noise? cried Big Bill as Horace's neighs and pounding hooves woke the household. It's the influenza, whispered old William as they helped him back to the house. The flu's got me too. Big Bill and young Billy made the dough that night. Big Bill dozed on the cart as he and Horace delivered the bread that afternoon. It didn't matter. Horace knew the way as well as Big Bill. For two days, Big Bill and young Billy chopped wood and carried bags of flour and mixed dough and piled up loaves. But on the third day, Big Bill leaned weakly against the stacker. The flu's got me too, he muttered, but the people need their bread. So many sick with the flu just now. They can't get well if they can't eat. Young Billy put up his chin. I can do the bread, Dad. A young lad can't do it all, muttered Big Bill. And then he fainted right in the middle of the finger rolls. All night, young Billy carried wood, mixed the dough, punched the loaves down and shaped the rolls, slid the big paddle into the giant ovens and pulled it out, crowned with loaves of hot, fresh bread. Young Billy piled them into the wagon as the birds began to sing. His hands trembled with tiredness. Suddenly, Horace began to clop away with no one at the reins. Stop, cried young Billy. Horace turned and gave him a short whinny. A boy can't chop wood and make the bread all night. But he can't deliver the bread all day too, but Horace could. All day Horace plodded along the streets. Some of the women wore dressing gowns now. Others were weak and pale. Sometimes a single child ran out, their eyes weary from caring for their family. They clutched their bread, 
the fresh soft bread and patted Horace before he began to plod on again. He's brought the bread, whispered Mrs. Atkins. Horace has brought the bread. She started to cry. All of us sick and nothing to eat, but Horace has bought the bread. Mrs. Atkins took ten loaves that day. Even Mrs. Tuppence took two. Street after street, stopping only to drink at the creek. Horace delivered the fresh, fragrant loaves to a woman with shaking hands and hollow eyes, men in nightshirts and kids in nighties, tearing at the crusts and eating them hungrily as they carried them back inside. Then back to the bakery. Every night, young Billy chopped and carried, mixed and baked and loaded the cup. Every day, Horace carried the bread alone. And then Big Bill was back, and old William too. The children played in the streets again, and the woman wore aprons, not dressing gowns. And life went on, year after year. There were fewer horses to greet now. The butcher had a white and red truck. The fruit and vegetable man drove a ewe. The rabbit o vanished and cars drove down the roads, so the kids had to play cricket in their gardens. Then one day, a truck stood by the bakery door. Horace watched as old William and Big Bill loaded it up and young Billy drove it away. No more deliveries for you, Horace, said Big Bill. Reckon you can take it easy, old man? All day Horace waited, lonely in his paddock. No strawberry jam crusts, no pats on his neck. Horace heard the woman gossip in the distance as they stood around the veggie man's ute. He heard the sparrows chatter on the power lines, but sparrows don't pat your neck. Then he heard the voices of the children on their way back from school. It's Horace. Hello, Horace. Strawberry jam crusts and tomato sandwiches, hot from a day in a school bag. Handfuls of grass pulled up from under fences. The woman came to the paddock with their buckets to gather their rose food now. They bought him carrots and held their babies up to pat him or ride on his broad back. Mrs. Tuppence bought him roses to two. The best roses ever for the baker's horse who had saved them all. Daytime ends with golden light and children's laughter high and bright. Is this a true story? The story. Jackie French wrote the tale of Horace based on a story her own grandma had told her about a baker's horse delivering the bread all by himself. There are other stories similar to this. In 1950, the Australasian baker and Miller's Journal published a story about a horse called Nugget, who, when his driver was sick, set off on his regular delivery round all by himself, but without any bread. The cart. There's a real cart in the National Museum of Australia's collection that looks just like the one Horace pulled to deliver the bread. The museum's cart was built in the 1930s, but its design dates back to the 1900s. Its name is Bakery Cart number 168, and it was part of the fleet of carts used by Newcastle and Suburban Cooperative to deliver the bread around the city streets of Newcastle, New South Wales. The flu. It's hard to imagine a whole town getting sick, but this is what happens just after the First World War. A sickness known as the Spanish flu swept across the world and reached Australia in 1919. More people died from this flu than died in the war. Horace. Horace is just like all the hard-working, strong, gentle, brave and very smart horses who used to be seen at on every street in every town all over Australia. They all deserve their own happy ever after. The end.